Another video from the plot of the 2013 drama, Lorilla Juice. 1757 France. 16-year-old Susan Simonon is the youngest of three daughters of the family. The girl plays the piano perfectly and sings beautifully. The girl's older sisters get married, and Susan is unexpectedly sent by her parents to a nunnery. The girl hopes that this is only temporary and that sooner parents will take her home, but the relatives and priests insist that Susanna take the veil and become a novice. The girl has never wanted to be a nun. She is sure she has another calling despite people's entreaties. The kind and perceptive A.B.I.'s Timony has a long talk with the newcomer and gently persuades her to accept her lunch, but on the appointed day, Susanna declares to the priest that she cannot lie to God and refuses to take the sacred meal. Susanna is sent home anew, and her parents are not at all happy when her daughter returns to change the girl's mind. Her mother admits that she betrayed her husband with another man and that after this extramarital affair, Susanna was born. Of course, the husband of the mother has no idea about it, but the woman is sure that now her daughter must atone for the only sin of her life by going to a nunnery. Also, after the older sisters have been given in marriage, the family has no money for a dowry, and so Susanna can never find a husband and will be forced to live in poverty. The maiden has no choice but to return to the abbey to the abbey's timony as the other convents will not admit her after publicly refusing to give her a sacred meal. Her mother takes her daughter to the convent, promising to visit often. Abi's Timony encourages the newcomer and gives her the sacred medallion. However, her decision to take monastic vows affected her so much that she spent two days in the local infirmary without even remembering how she got there. Unexpectedly, the new superior, Sister Pristina, enters Suzanne's room to get acquainted. Only a few days later, Susanna succeeds in discovering that Demoni was murdered by the mentally deranged Sister Benedict, which brings tears of grief to her eyes. Sister Pristina imposes very strict rules on the convent, and it is not only Susanna who dares to protest her cruelty and injustice. The Mother Superior cannot tolerate those who oppose her will and is going to teach the insolent one a harsh lesson. Christine forbids Susanna to eat in the dining room, to write letters, to visit her loved ones, and to confess. The other sisters first chun the unruly girl and then begin to torment and punish the poor girl, confident that they will tame her rebellious temper. The only one who continues to treat the newcomer humanely and nurture her is her kind-hearted sister, Ursula. Without being noticed, Susanna steals paper, ink, and a quill from the monastery chancery and begins to write down everything that has happened to her since her first appearance at the abbey. The girl has barely managed to hide her diary in the floor between the blackboards when Christine appears and demands the return of the writing materials. Susanna says she has thrown everything away, but the prioress does not believe her. Christina tells them to strip the impudent girl naked and put rags on her. Do you like the movie recap? Please like it and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Then they force her to walk through broken glass and lock her in a dungeon. A few days later, Suzanne is released. Christina makes the girls swear not to tell anyone of her cruel punishment and then declares that Susanna is soon to sing before her distinguished guests. Back in her cell, the girl continues to keep her diary. The next morning, Susanna asks Ursula to pass her notes on to a lawyer, and her sister promises to help as her mother knows many people in town. Soon, Paul Munry, a lawyer, arrives at the convent. He has read the girl's diary and sent it to the Vatican with a request to annul Susanna's sacred vows. The lawyer promises to inform the girl as soon as he receives an answer. Soon, the abbess learns of the nun's petition. She summons Susanna to her house and accuses her of lying and frivolous attitude towards her sacred vows. The sister becomes hysterical, screaming that she does not want to be a nun and begging to be released home. Christina declares that Susanna is possessed and forbids her even to pray. From that day on, the superior humiliates the girl before the other sisters and prepares a new punishment for her. Suzanne is forbidden to wear a cassock, barred from the chapel, and forced to sleep on a thin mattress on the floor. One day, the bishop arrives at the monastery, and Susan tearfully speaks of how she is being ill-treated. The bishop personally examines Susanna's miserable cell and warns her that he will demand her resignation from the Vatican. A few days later, Paul returns to the convent, regretting that the Vatican has refused his sister's request. However, 
Isola's mother succeeded in getting her sister transferred to another monastery on condition that Susanna stopped communicating with her daughter because, in her opinion, the stubborn girl had a bad influence on her. Paul personally accompanies Susanna to another convent where the atmosphere is much friendlier. The sisters try to help her and the convinced superior pays great attention to Susanna, showering her with her motherly care. The mother superior has a long talk with Susanna about her life and often asks her to play the piano. But the tenderness of Sister Eustatia towards Susanna is very upsetting and irritating to Sister Teresa, whom the mother superior was particularly fond of before the arrival of the newcomer. Susanna assures Teresa that she has no interest in the superior, but the latter does not believe her. When Susan once again plays the piano for the mother superior, Sister Eustatia begins gently stroking the girl's head. Teresa cannot stand it and runs into the room, which annoys the prioress. She tells the obsessive girl to leave, and Susanna does not understand what is going on. A few days later, the prioress calls her in again and orders her to kiss Sister Eustatia on the forehead. But the prioress says it is not enough and insists on repeating it, softly touching her body, which makes her tense up. The next evening, Susanna tells the mother superior about her past, which makes Sister Eustatia weep. But the words of the good mother demon I caused the mother superior to become jealous. At night, the mother superior comes to Susanna's cell and declares that she cannot sleep because of her sinful desires. She climbs into her bed and kisses her, but luckily, a knock at the door forces Sister Eustatia to leave. In the morning, the mother superior admits that she has locked the clingy Teresa in her room. To which Susanna asks Sister Eustatia to let her out and not punish her. In confession, Susanna tells Pastor Moran of the abbess' strange behavior, even though the woman is asked not to. The pastor orders the girl in the future to push Sister Eustatia away like Satan and pray all night long. In the evening, the prioress comes and begs her not to reject her. She spitefully adds that the pastor turns everyone she likes against her. Soon, the whole convent starts whispering about the strange relations between the abbess and Susanna. Sister Eustatia loses all shame and starts pestering the newcomer in front of everybody. A few days later, Pastor Moran calls Suzanne in to give her the key to the back door. Moran tells her that the girl's guardian has arranged for her escape from the convent, and that a carriage will be waiting for her at a certain hour on the road. Before saying goodbye, the pastor confesses that he never wanted to be a priest, but that he did not have the courage to refuse this life, unlike the resolute Susanna. Susanna leaves the convent at night, and a carriage awaits her, soon taking her to the manor. In the morning, Susanna awakes in the rich house and finds her diary on the table. The girl goes out onto the balcony and admires the beautiful garden in front of the mansion. Susanna is welcomed by the Marquis de Croma, the son of her biological father and the girl's brother. The Marquis notes bitterly that her father died shortly before Susanna came to the mansion, although he was anxious to meet his daughter. Susanna's father had planned her escape in advance, but a few days before the appointed day, his condition worsened considerably and he let his son read Susanna's diary.